You know, it gets weirder and weirder every time when I watch wrestling outside of WWE. And to hear the wrestlers swear, it, it's kind of throwing me off. It's like, it's like, oh shit, they weren't supposed to say that. Oh, oh, like, oh, the company's gonna be mad about that one. It, it, it's like, I am so, like, in that WWE bubble that if somebody curse, I'm like, oh shit! Like, you know, but then when I hear it in either Being the Elite on YouTube or when I'm watching uh, the history of the Bullet Club on YouTube on, you know, New Japan Pro Wrestling's YouTube channel and other stuff, it's like, holy shit, yo, they're swearing. And then I'm like, wait a minute, they're, they're real people like me, what the fuck? <laughs> God, like, that's what happens when you watch a, pre a PG product for 10 fucking years that when you hear other wrestling organizations have their wrestlers swear it's it throws you off and it, it, it kind of makes things a bit cooler in my eyes welcome to the seven days podcast where this week there's a lot to talk about and i'm gonna give my thoughts on money in the bank and the 24 7 wwe championship belt um First of all, Money to Bank, let me give it a brief review because everyone else, you know, okay. So the way how I felt about the show, the show was 50-50. It was cool, it was 50 it was 50% good, 50% boring at the same time. And here's where the boring part was. The boring part was I think actually no, I don't want to actually not thinking about it. 50%, 50%, not really a good way to describe it. Maybe um Let's look, look, look at the matches exactly. Becky Lynch versus Lacey Evans was boring uh, for me. Um, Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair. Thank God it was cut short. And Miz versus Shane. I knew Shane was going to win via fuckery where he would slip out of his shirt like it's a, like it's a, I don't know. Like he just, like I knew Miz was going to pull his shirt up and then Shane would slip out and fall onto the floor and win the matchup. I knew Shane was going to win the match via accident. And that was an accident where Miz pulled his shirt up and he just slipped out. You know? Pretty much. That, that's pretty much what that was. So, I would say those three matches were like the downer. But everything else was blessed. You know, Kovic kicks versus Kevin Owens. Nice match. The crowd was, was dead for it because they were exhausted after that great instant classic matchup between AJ Styles and Seth Rollins. Great match. One of the best matches of the year so far on the main roster in WWE. Um, the match, uh, Bailey cashing in Money in the Bank. That was a great moment. Great moment. Obviously, Money in the Bank had a lot of great moments, without a doubt. The Money in the Bank ladder match. I think a lot of people would say that that match was kind of like the MVP of the, of the night, so to speak. Like, it was the match of the night for a lot of people. For me, it was Styles and Rollins. But right neck and neck, right behind it, though, is the men's Money in the Bank ladder match. And then the women's Money in the Bank ladder match, because that match was good as well. Carmella and, you know, Mandy Rose getting to it a little bit. I saw that tweet, you know, saying you should be a little bit safer in the ring, go back to NXT. <laughs> I, I saw that before you deleted that, Carmella. Um... Like, there's a lot going on this week. But my favorite part of Money in the Bank, my favorite part, favorite part of the night, was obviously Brock Lester. <laughs> now, the second I heard the music, I popped. I was like, what? Holy shit. Brock Lesnar's coming out. He rips it to him. I'm like, oh my god. He's, like, when I see Brock Lesnar run, like... <laughs> It's like if you see a, a fucking tiger or a lion haul ass in that shield ready to bite the fuck out of you. That's what it's like for me <laughs> when you see Brock Lesnar running down from the stage to the ring. Brock Lesnar was haul ass in towards the ring. He tips over the ladder that was set up uh, uh, right by the end of the ramp. So he tossed that shit right into the camera crew. 
and some of the referees, I think. He got into the ring. Ali was like, oh, shit. Like, he was frozen. He didn't know what to do. Now, a lot of people called it out like, oh, my God, it's so dumb. Why does everybody do this? When they get to the top, it's true, though. It's true. When they get to the top, they pause, and it's like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> like, they just, they just stand there, and, and nobody, nobody's like... Saying, yo, fam, unhook this shit. He just standing there like, oh, shit, like, he's frozen. Like, like Sub-Zero hit him with that, what a, what a, one of his frozen maneuvers. And, and he just stood there. And he couldn't, he couldn't move. So Brock got in the ring and then tipped the ladder over. Ollie's face hit the, the top rope, busted his mouth up, got to the top. Brock, the way how Brock was so cocky about it. He climbed up the ladder slowly. I think he was nervous because he never climbed up the ladder in WWE, at least to my knowledge. So he climbed up the ladder for the first time I've ever seen this from Brock. Climbing up the ladder, and then he gets to the top. He's like, ah! <laughs> like, he, he's just bragging about it so hard. He either hooks it, and he wins, but in the bag, rude grin on his face. And then look at that Paul Heyman. He's like, guess who's back? Guess who's back, baby? <laughs> <laughs> now everyone everyone else was shitting on it and booing it. I was loving it because I can't help it. I can't help I can't help but to love a cocky Brock Lesnar. I'm sorry, I can't help it. Like, yeah, yeah, I was all over the dude for the past two years, right? I, I know, I know. I'm not going back on what I've said and how I acted. I'm just saying, you know, I didn't expect Here's the thing, y'all should know from me already, I love surprises sometimes. Like when Goldberg beat Brock at Survivor Series 2016 in Toronto. Like, it, like that, I I was a gangster at first. I was like, nah, it's, it's going to diminish Brock beating Undertaker at the streak, all that shit. I give you all the excuses I can give you, right? And then when it happened, I fucking loved it. <laughs> So it's kind of like that. Now, Brock coming now, it's bad. It's bad the way how they ended Money in the Bank because, you know, young guys like Ali, who people got behind, finally, they finally got behind Ali. And now, uh, when I watch SmackDown, people were chanting for Ali when he faced Andrade. So that's good. That, that's a good move. Um, so um, Ali looking good in the, in the eyes of the fans. But the way how God, the, the seven guys... You know, tore the house down in that Money to Bank ladder match. One of the best Money to Bank ladder matches I can remember, honestly. And the way how they just they just destroyed each other. Going through ladders and power bombing men's like hard onto another ladder while off a ladder. Like it crazy. Like Andrade and Finn Balor, I still have that image of Balor popping off of the ladder he got power bombed onto by Andrade. It was vicious. Like wicked. But um I can't help seeing Brock Lesnar going to the top and just with a rude smile on his face holding the contract in his hand. I, I can't help it. I'm sorry. And then well, what do we get the next night? He's bopping with the fucking briefcase like it's a boombox. Like, I, how can you not love Brock Lesnar? I swear to God. How can you hate a cocky Brock Lesnar? I'm sorry. Like, it's funny. Now, I instantly knew where this was going when he got the briefcase. I was like, oh. So I guess they needed a logical reason for Brock to face Seth because rematches are antiquated. So I guess they needed a reason. So they looked at Money the Bank was the best time to do it. Since Saudi Arabia was running right around the corner anyway. So they might as well like, fuck it. Let's just let Brock win. He wins the contract and he's going to cash in on Seth to get the rematch at Saudi Arabia. I guess they needed something logical, you know. People were like, well, Brock doesn't need the Money the Bank contract. You're right. He could just walk in, demand a shot, and he would get it. He could just he could just fart and he would get a shot like that. And that is true. But here's the thing though. What if Brock was Paul Heyman at least made it uh you know on Raw came out and said, Well, we had a, like a short agreement, you know. Uh, we were able to put Brock into the match finally since there was an open spot. And boom, Brock was in the match. He capitalized when Mansur got got destroyed. And Went in and did the deed and got the job done. So I'm not mad at it. Of course I'm not mad at it. I don't like the idea of Brock winning money in the bank in 2019 compared to the young stars that was in the match. But at the same time, I'm not mad at it because A, they need a logical reason. They gave us a, 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 
mediocre one at best, but still a logical reason to for Brock to win and then use that to get a shot at the Universal Championship. I still think he's facing for the he's facing Seth Rollins for the Universal title at Saudi Arabia because people are saying, oh, he's gonna go after Kofi Kingston. Why? Brock Lesnar lost to Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins kicked Brock Lesnar in the fucking balls to win the Universal Championships before he stomped the fuck out of him three times. You don't think that's going to be Brock Lesnar's head be like, this motherfucker walking around with my belt kicked me in my balls, and y'all happy with that? Nah, you good. And he's going to come back and try to get back his championship. But for Kofi Kingston, it's like, there's nothing there. Oh, it's a rematch, because I said this on Monday night when I saw Kofi come out on Raw. I'm like, oh, shit. What if they decide to go after Kofi Kingston with it, right? The last time Kofi Kingston fought Brock Lesnar was that that Land of the Rising Sun or whatever the fuck the show was called in 2015. When it was the Beast in the East or some shit, right? When Brock Lesnar took on Kofi Kingston in like five minutes of a match, knew they got buried by Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Remember that shit? So, I think if they're going to do that, it's the, they have to bring that up. If they, if they try to act like nothing they never fought before, bullshit. Come on. It's on the network, for God's sakes. I don't need the network to remember that match exactly. Come on. Same night, Finn Balor beat Kevin Owens to win his first NXT championship. Damn. Y'all people and your memories are so awful. I'm sorry. Anyways, but... Bailey went into Money in the Bank. Uh... Awesome. I was again. I was full. I was behind that 100%. Bailey won the money in the bank. Behind that 100%. Cashing it in. I didn't know when she would do it, but I'm glad she did. I was like, give us the shield moment, but with the horsewoman instead. Think about it. In the shield, you had Roman Reigns being WWE champion, lost the title to Seth. Seth lost to Dean Ambrose right after because Ambrose cashed in from behind and won the championship. So I was thinking, why don't they do the same thing? Charlotte beats Becky, wins the ninth title, right? And then somehow, I figured that they might do something like this, where Charlotte would stick around and beat up Becky Lynch or some shit. I figured that she would do something like this. And then Bailey comes through, cashes in eventually, and wins the Women's Championship. Now, people were saying that her winning the title is a big F you to Sasha Banks. Honestly, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I just don't care. Sasha Banks, whether it's a fuck you to you, or to you or not, I don't care. Bailey won the belt. That's all I'm happy with. So, I mean, why try to make this about Sasha when it's supposed to be about Bailey? This is why I hate wrestling fans sometimes. They try to take something and then they try to make it about someone else, even though it's supposed to be special for the person that actually accomplished something. Sasha Banks is fucking home or on vacation chilling where like she deserves to. She deserves to chill after all the fuckery she's been through. I'm not against her at all. I'm just saying, why you gotta be uh, trying to take Bailey's moment and trying to turn into a fucking a, a narrative or something to fucking push it as, oh, that's WWE saying, that could have been you, Sasha, but your ass wanna chill at home. So, fuck off. We'll give it to your bestie in Bailey, even though Bailey was in that same camp with Sasha Banks, who's been treated like shit for two fucking years. And finally, now she got her big break. And I'm actually happy it's Bailey because at least Bailey might get a longer title, title reign. For all we know, Sasha would have won the contract, cashed it in, and lose it under 30 days again, becoming a five time loser. You never know. This company does not change, you know. I hope you know that. So I don't know why people always give WWE the benefit of the doubt sometimes. When it comes to situations like these. They have yet to prove in me. They have four chances to prove to me that they can make Sasha Banks a credible champion. And they have not done so. So who am I to freaking come out here and, and doubt WWE giving Banks an opportunity or a shot. But let's keep going. Sasha Banks... Uh -uh. Bailey won the championship. I'm happy about that because I'm tired of Charlotte Flair in the championship picture. For fuck's sake. We're done with that. We're, bye. Now, the fact that they're having Becky on SmackDown, even though she's the Raw Women's Champion, this stupid wild card, yet people like it somehow. I don't know how you see it. I'm watching SmackDown on the network like three, two years ago. Two and a half, three years ago. It's 2016 after the brand split was done, right? Was uh, ready to go and starting. 
I'm watching SmackDown. And I'm watching and I'm like, where the fuck, did, what happened? Where the, where did this go? You know, we, we had, we had so many great stuff going on. You had stuff, like people didn't hate on Alexa Bliss like they do now, before. They, we used to have Becky Lynch being the champion, the leader of the women's division on SmackDown. You had Naomi coming to her own. You had Nikki Bella there feuding with Carmella at the time. You had Dean Ambrose, you know, after losing the championship, getting big wins over John Cena on SmackDown Live, etc. You have The Miz on the rise as Intercontinental Champion. Dolph Ziggler feeding with The Miz as well. You had a lot of good shit. Slater! Heat Slater and Rhino, a unknown makeshift tag team, came through and then got the fans behind them, won the tag titles at Backlash. Where the fuck did it, where did that go? What happened to tag team wrestling and all this other stuff that happened all over the years? What happened? I don't get it. Now all of a sudden, we got the wild card because the networks, USA and Fox, are now saying, oh, we want big stars on both shows. So they're like, we don't want to end the brand split. Wild card where four to five stars can be on one show. Like, I want to see Charlotte Flair on two shows a week. Would I rather see her once a week? All right? This isn't fucking WWE before the brand split in 2015, 2016, where you had Monday Night Raw Live and SmackDown taped, and you would see the big stars on Raw, and some of the big stars on Raw show up on SmackDown as well. Eh, eh. That's not what this is, okay? I don't like this at all. So... That's just me. Now, WWE 24 Championship. 24-7 Championship. Now, when Mick Foley came out and he's just blobbing at the mouth, just talking and talking and talking, blah de blah blah for so long, he brings out the championship, right? He's like, the WWE 24-7 title. And I'm like... What the fuck is that? That looks like a that looks like if Cultaholic made that championship, but instead of instead of getting instead of having the C logo on there, they took that shit out and replaced it with twenty four seven the number and the slash, and then you, you you put gold on it instead of looking bronze to silver maybe dark looking. No, they just put gold and hell. Why not green strap? The fuck? Now the championship looks ugly. I'm not gonna lie, it does. I don't want to. I'm not gonna come out here and say eh, it's I. You know, it's not that bad. And then yet, no, no, it's bad. It, it, I don't like it. I, I try to give it a chance, but it's like every time I look at it, I don't like gag or anything. But like, I just don't find the appeal in it. I just don't. But I hear people say the hardcore title looks ugly. Are you fucking mad? Hardcore championship was exactly what it needed to be. They made another hardcore championship design in 2002, I believe. And that one was a lot worse than the original one. Just saying. So, the 24-7 championship. And then Mick Foley also said that Raw's third hour is going to be dark. And, you know, it's going to be raw and whatnot. I'm like, what? Because I, I even... I, I, wasn't, I wasn't even paying attention to where... I also asking questions like, why the fuck is the, th why is Raw all dark? Why is it all black and white? What the fuck happened? Like, <laughs> are they getting, like, new graphics? Like, well, what's happening? You know, it's the same graphics, but apparently now, when it's third hour of Raw, it's dark. I I'm not following you. I don't understand it. So... He brings up the championship, saying he's going to be defended 24-7. When I think 24-7, I mean literally every fucking day of the week, right? Every day, every hour, every minute, every second. So I'm thinking, okay, so I could be chilling in my tub. Nice bubble bath, right? And a dude could come in, pause, but a dude could come in with a referee Pin me while I'm in my bait while I'm in my tub. He pins me and wins the 24-7 championship. That's what I'm thinking when I think of 24-7. I could be taking a shit in the toilet. A man could come and jump me in the bathroom stall. Be a little bit disgusting, but you get the drift. 
beat me in the, in the bathroom stall, and pins me for the 24-7 championship. I could be chilling at an amusement park and I get beat for the championship. So, that's what I'm thinking, and that's what I'm expecting WWE to do. Instead of, you know, to the all backstage, so I want extra shit. You know, have camera crew go out to amusement parks or water parks or a normal fucking park with a field and whatnot. Whatever. A jungle gym, airport, something. Somewhere where they got to defend the championship. Kind of like what they did in the ad to there with Crash. He defended the hardcore title at a, at a clown play. Uh, what was it? A circus. Uh, at, at the airport. A ball pit, etc. Shit like that I want to see and I expect to see on WWE television, whether it's on Raw, SmackDown, pay-per-view, etc. So, I went from hating the championship because Mick Foley is awful at announcing championship titles. I am sorry. Um, the dude can barely talk when he speaks. It sounds like he's, like he's, um... And he has a speech impediment like Jack Swagger, you know, like it, it, it just, it, it's not his fault because, you know, the teeth, he, he I, th I think he has lack of teeth in his mouth, you know what I'm saying? But also WWE, just, uh, they just, I don't know why, they haven't learned, I don't know why they didn't learn from the Universal Championship reveal two, three years ago. I don't get it. Universal Championship. Boo. That belt sucks. That bell sucks i didn't forget yet they didn't learn they have foley come out and reveal the championship and nobody says a damn thing the crowd goes mild not a word and then look before he saw that look on his face like ah oh, shit they're not fucking with this uh uh yeah 24 7 and like <laughs> So I went from disliking the championship, right, hating the championship, and then when I saw people like Titus O'Neil and EC3 and Eric Young, fully shaven by the way, um, and Cedric Alexander come out, I'm like, oh shit. So let's see how this goes, right? So they're fighting it out like it's a fucking rumble, like like it's a like it's a a battle royale like f fuckery. I don't know what's going on. They're all fighting it out, and the rules were what to get your hands on the championship and run with it. What well, was that? Was that what the that was the rules? So, so many people got their hands on the title, but in the end, my boy Tato Sunio, who fucking blocked me, you dick, got his hands on the championship, and he ripped it. I'm like, run, man! The fuck you doing celebrating? <laughs> It's 24-7! Run! So he got the championship, he runs a little bit, he celebrated at the same time, and then Bobby Roode rolled him up, one, two, three, Roode, uh, he got the wall, he got the win, he didn't get the belt, took a while for the referee to get the championship on, to do Bobby Roode, and then Bobby Roode's like, ah, oh, shit, all these bands are after me, and he ripped it, he ran all the way backstage, and then he got, you know, we saw the thing with R-Truth backstage, R-Truth got the title now, R-Truth calling it the European Championship. I'm like, you know what? Yep. Yep, that's 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 why this 24-7. Yep, European Championship. Gotta love R-Truth, man. I'm surprised he never had a World Championship run yet in WWE. Tragic. But he had an NWA World title run outside WWE. So, gotta give him that. He's a part of the lineage of the NWA World Championship history. So, you gotta give him that. Even though a lot of people are discrediting the NWA title, but uh, a lot of people are going to be discrediting the 24-7 championship a lot more. Trust. So, those are my thoughts on Money in the Bank and 24-7 championship. Um, I'm trying to... I, honestly, I'm trying to gain interest into outside WWE wrestling. Like, I'm watching Impact a lot more now, and... I'm tr and I'm watching Being the Elite on YouTube a lot. I'm getting ready. I'm getting excited for all this stuff. All Elite Wrestling, you know, Double or Nothing pay-per-view. You know, Sean Spears is going to be a part of it. Sean Spears, a.k.a. the Perfect Ten, Ty Dillinger. You know, that same guy who had the Ten Chan, the Ten gimmick, and then WWE's like, ah, shit, they're going to keep using that from now on. Cut it, cut it. And then they, they fucked him up bad. So... Yeah, so let's go over some WWE rumors and news and updates and all this shit. Sports Kid, a major update on Rey Mysterio's injury status. Okay, 
The PW Insider are reporting that Remy Stur has spotted in Birmingham, Alabama with the assumption that the United States Champion is there to get his shoulder looked at with Birmingham being the home of to WWE's favored medical professionals and the location where most of superstars surgeries are performed. So he separate he gotten a separated shoulder sustained at Money the Bank with his match against Samoa Joe. So we don't know what's gonna happen with Rey Mysterio. Honestly man, nobody's gonna announce what's gonna happen next week with the championship belt. So we'll see what happened with that. Between uh Rey Mysterio, Samoa Joe, and the United States title. Massive matches for the WWE Extreme Rules pay-per-view. Okay. So we're getting the, the Super Showdown on June 7th on Friday. We're getting NXT TakeOver 25. Probably the best show of the year. I bet. Alright. I'm just laying it out there right now. NXT TakeOver 25. Okay. On uh, June 1st. I believe that's a Saturday. I might be wrong. And then we're getting, we're getting WWE stomping grounds in Tacoma, Washington. On June 23rd, I believe. Right? And then July, I guess we're getting extreme rules. According to PW Insider, Kofi Kingston will defend his WWE Championship against Kevin Owens and Dolph Ziggler. Last time it was reported that it was Randy Orton. This time it's Dolph Ziggler, his former opponent and his future opponent. Seth Rollins, meanwhile, will train his eyes towards Baron fucking Corbin and Extreme Rules after his feud with Brock Lesnar. Roman Reigns could face off against Drew McIntyre, Shane McMahon in a fucking handicap match. McIntyre and Reigns faced off at WrestleMania 35, while Reigns will face Shane at Super Showdown. You can see the excitement went from high to low in an instant. Meanwhile, AJ Styles will face off against the mystery opponent in Extreme Rules, one that does, one that hasn't been revealed as of yet. Randy Orton, Elias, and Becky Lynch are also booked to be a part of the pay-per-view in July. I'm going to assume Randy Orton versus Ali is going to happen. That's what I'm assuming. Ali, you know, Orton, they have been going back and forth on SmackDown Live, so maybe that might be the case. Okay, another update on Sasha Banks. I'm really getting tired of this, but you know what? I'm going to talk about it, get my thoughts about it real quick. Talking about the Sasha Banks situation, Brad, Shep uh, Brad Shepard on Oh You Didn't Know said the following on today's show. Quote, the company originally wanted to play Sasha in the MITB, Money the Bank, match and have her win, but that didn't happen. Situation with Sasha was quiet as of last week, and she's still expected to remain with the company, uh, in the company, and eventually return. As I've reported, WWE are reportedly still hopeful on convincing her to return, but the two sides are not in touch right now. What's next? There's no return. There's not return date for Banks just yet, but with Bailey having the title, it might be. It might not be long before she returned to attack her best friend. Nope. I don't want that. Nope. No, 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 no. Keep Sasha on... You know what? It's not going to matter. <laughs> it's not going to matter. Well, I was going to say, you know what? I, I was, I was going to say, nope, keep her on Raw. Keep her away from... You know, it's not going to matter. Wild card, right? So that means we're going to see Sasha on, on both shits. Fuck. I, I hate this. Report. From Kate Side Seats. By the way, the three reports I already talked about. Remy Stowe's injury update. Uh, rumors about Extreme Rules matches being teased. And Sasha Banks update return was from Sports Kita. Uh, this one's from KateSideSeats.com. Report. New 24-7 title was not WWE's idea. So who came up with this monstrosity? We'll find that out. Okay. For those who love or loathe WWE's new 24-7 title, I'm 50-50 I'm on it. You can now shift your praise or anger over to the USA Network. Wow. Fucking USA Network. They don't know shit. I'm sorry. Two episodes in and the 24-7 title has already given viewers some of the most... Some of the more memorable moments of the night. Not really. A new report states 
the idea to bring a new title into the mix did not come from WWE. In the latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, uh, Dave Meltzer reports that the 24-7 title was part of a laundry list of items given to WWE from the USA Network. In recent weeks, quote uh, from Dave Meltzer, in recent weeks, the ratings for the Raw, for Raw's third hour got bad enough that WWE recognized they had to do something. The big move was basically to allow the top stars from SmackDown to appear on Raw and to make sure SmackDown doesn't become a secondary show while it's getting ready to move to Fox. To do the same, USA Network of late was sending in all kinds of ideas to WWE to bring up the third hour ratings. Oh yeah, like that's gonna do anything. I'm sorry, it's not. The third hour is a fucking... Let me keep going. One person with acknowledge uh, of the story said the ideas were all terrible, but the 24-7 idea was the best one, and McMahon knew he had to take one of them. While the idea is 24-7, Foley in announcing it said that it would be there for the third hour of Raw, which made no sense of it can be defended at any time, but that's the reason he said it. I guess it's it, it'll be most mostly part of the third hour even though the idea can be defended at any time. The thing that sticks here is that the majority of USC Network's idea were terrible. Has this source watched WWE over the past two months as ratings continue to sink? WWE has trotted out so many half ha, half Big creative ideas in recent weeks. The thought of USA executives having even worse ideas sounds just a bit off. Maybe because um, the goals pa- post were moved ba- were moved so far back, but one week into the 24/7 title experiment, the ratings for both Raw and SmackDown were up this week. In need of creative help, should WWE be taking in more ideas for from their TV network partners like USA and Fox, or is that just a recipe for disaster down the road? You see, here's this, this is where people fucked up here, okay? This is where people fucked up here. The WWE. The reason why ratings are failing. Lack of character. And lack of storytelling, right? Uh, 24-7 championship. It may have brought the ratings up a little bit because obviously everyone's going to be paying attention, paying attention to, you know, a new championship being revealed on WWE television. Even though adding a title to WWE is a bad move in my eyes because, well, you have, let's see, I'm, I'm talking all over WWE, all over. You got NXT, NXT Tag Team, NXT Women's, NXT North American Championships, that's NXT's, right? All four championships. You got the NXT UK. You got the NXT UK Championship. WWK United Kingdom Championship, right? That's the main title. And you got the NXT UK Tag Team Championships. And the NXT UK Women's Championship. I would be surprised if they announced a NXT UK Mid-Card Championship eventually. So that's that. Cruiserweight title for the Cruiserweights on 205 Live. Dead on Raw and SmackDown. Let's see. Universal Championship, United States Championship, Raw Tag Team Titles, and the Women's Tag Team Titles, and the Raw Women's Championship. That's five on Raw. And then, same thing for SmackDown, pretty much. So, well, you know, WWE Championship, Intercontinental Title, SmackDown Tag Team Titles, SmackDown Women's Title, and the Women's Tag Team Title be on both shows. Whoo! There is about freaking over dozen championships in WWE combined. All of them. All of them. Over a dozen. Yet, adding one more is going to be better? I don't think so. No. I'm watching Being the Elite. Someone asked uh, Matt Jackson, uh, yo, like how many championships does AEW plan on having? And it's like, well, we're going to plan to have a few. A few! Because we don't want to, you know... Diminish the prestige of the championships. They want to have title changes mean something. WWE. <sighs> the last time I felt like a championship melt meant something, I think was 2016 on SmackDown. 
The last time the Universal Championship was a big deal to me was when Kevin Owens won it in a Fatal 4 match. Honest. It was a big deal at SummerSlam, but then I'm talking after what happened. You know, Finn Balor won it and he got hurt and relinquished it the next night. So, that barely counts. When Kevin Owens won it on Raw on August 29th, I mean, or August 30th, I, bruh, crazy. Great episode of Raw that day. I'm not, I'll never forget that one. Triple H turning heel on, or turning on Seth Rollins. He was already heel, so he's turning on Seth Rollins for Kevin Owens, etc. So, all I can say is, dude, adding more championships is not going to make things better. I'm sorry. Okay. CNBC.com. WWE to have a new rival, and it's about to make its pay-per-view debut. Okay. Okay. WWE had has had the sports entertainment market in a chokehold for much of the 21st century, particularly in the United States and Europe, since the acquisition of several rival organizations in the early 2000s. However, a new adversary is about to enter the ring this weekend when All Elite Wrestling AEW makes its own pay-per-view bow. However, or, oh, sorry, own, <laughs> yeah, however, a new, uh, okay, Owned by Tony Khan, a son of Shahid Khan, the billionaire owner of the NFL's Jag Jack uh, Jacksonville Jaguars, and also London-based English soccer team Fulham. Fulham, yeah. AEW has been attempting to build momentum over uh, se over several months. On Saturday night, it will hold its first official Double or Nothing show in Las Vegas in the MGM Grand Arena. AEW has already built a roster of wrestlers, including the former WWE Champion Y2J, Chris Jericho, and enlisted another former WWE Superstar, Cody Rhodes, as Executive Vice President to be one of the faces of the brand. There is speculation on whether other WWE Superstars could switch to AEW with John Moxley, Jonathan David Good, known by his interim persona, Dean Ambrose, thought to be among them due to AEW being a privately owned company. Thank you. Don't be don't be WWE, please don't. Don't be a publicly traded. Don't don't just don't be private. Please. I I'm just saying. It is not obligated to disclose the wages of its wrestlers as opposed to WWE, which is a traded on the New York Stock Exchange. However, Vince McMahon, the CEO and chairman of War Wrestling Entertainment, has moved to initiated conditions within several WWE contracts to prevent this from happening and the company losing its male and female stars to a rival. Last week, Warner Media announced that it was partnering with AEW in order to broadcast events and on TNT Network in the United States and give fans a new wrestling experience for the first time in over 20 years. Let me tell you this, okay? WWE having conditions where, like, they add shit on people's contracts. Even though they can do that, they have the right to do that, but it's so petty. It's it's petty for, for, for them to do something like that. It's not even funny, man. I, I just don't get it. Why? Why oh why oh why? Like I, I, I just why keep a talent like Luke Harper like locked up in a contract even though you're not using him. I don't get it. Why can't you just let him go? If you like like I, I, I don't wanna I don't wanna be one of these people that, that reads reports and then like Take it as the gospel, <laughs> like it's like it's a hundred percent fact. Like that's what that's exactly what happened. You know, give it your benefit of the doubt. But if it did happen of a report saying that Harper went to Vince and he's like, "Why are you keeping me around if you're not even gonna use me?" and then go to Triple H about it, I mean, fam, the fuck. <laughs> like I would honestly at that point, I would do anything to get the fuck out the company. Honestly, I will show up late or. Poor ass performance in the ring. I'll do something. Like I, I first had the idea of failing the drug test to get out, but WWE realized that already. So I'm like, ah oh, shit. How else can I get out of there? You know, like 
you just gotta do something where they can't sue you. You know what I'm saying? Where they can't take you to court. So you can just go, do your job, do it poorly, let them get mad at you, yell at you and shit. Be like, I wanna fucking leave! Let me go! Like, release me off the contract! If not, I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing until you say, you're fired! I like if I was Harper, he's he's a nice guy. But if that was me, and I'm trying to get the fuck out of a place that is not making me happy, WWE now seems like fucking prison. <laughs> like, that's what it seems to be. Everybody's making WWE to seem like it's fucking prison, and people are trying to get out, but they can't get out. They gotta do their time, and when the time is up, that's when they can go. People try to break out before the time was up. And they try to break out, the WWE's gonna fucking strike and, 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 and fuck their whole lives up. So, oh my god, I don't know what, and yet there's some people out there that wants Jericho, Ambrose, CM fucking Punk to go back to the WWE. <laughs> You gotta be out of your goddamn mind if you want those those great people to go back to War Wrestling Entertainment Inc. Eh -eh. That's not a good move. That's not a good move at all. I'm sorry. When people are saying, oh, I want to see a book to wrestle, come back to wrestling. So I do too. I do too. You know, and I used to think having him come back to the baby would be great. Him against Seth Rollins, AJ Style. Oh, yeah, great. But then. You gotta think, think business-wise, after all this shit, going to court, all this stuff, and now, he comes back? CM Punk will look like the biggest bitch I've ever seen in my life. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, he won't, honestly, he won't care what I say, what you say, what anybody say. He'll do what he wanna do. That's him. I'm just giving him my opinion. That a, a person like that to... Fucking complain and go to court, fight WWE and win, do all this shit, and then all of a sudden, when the timing is right, when the moolah is right, when the money's right, that's when you come back and act like all these fucking years of you leaving, people chanting your name for all these fucking times, chanting your name at segments that are actually good, but they chant it for no reason, and just being disrespectful at times, but at, at a lot of times, being real, because some segments, some segments are actually boring as fuck, through all of that, all of a sudden you come back, eh, eh. nah, 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 if you come back to wrestling, okay, I instantly thought Ring of Honor would be a good place for him to go, why not, that's where he got his first, that's where he got his kick in the door in wrestling in the first place, right, like, as far as, like, on a, on a major scale, I should say, like, that's when people started to notice him. That's when WWE noticed him as well. Him going back to Ring of Honor would be nice. But then I'm thinking, well, since AEW's a thing, why not? When you're th when you're done with MMA at some point, you know, and you have interest in wrestling again, you swoop your ass back up here and go to AEW. Work on TNT and do whatever they, they that you want to do. You know what I'm saying? I don't see the idea of WWE or him going back to WWE along with the likes of Jericho. People are sitting on Jericho saying, how, oh, he made his name in WWE and now all of a sudden he's working for the rival. Co uh, fuck off. <laughs> like, dude, fuck you. Like, there's something called progressing. There's something called, you know, I don't know. You want to move up the ladder, so to speak, you want to do better, you know what I'm saying, instead of just being, like, Jericho said on the Busted, Radio, Busted Open Radio podcast with Bully Ray and the other guy, I, I forget his name, I'm sorry, but he's good on the, he's good on the show as well, right, he said, if he went back to WWE, he knew exactly what he would be doing, he would probably feud with Kevin Owens, right, because Kevin Owens beat him for the United States Championship, uh, back in 2017, Kevin Owens put him on the shelf for some shit, right? So, uh, like, like Jericho would come back and feud with Owens over that, right? That's what probably what, what would happen. And then Jericho would do the list, and even though the list would would not be funny at this point, honestly, yeah, it'd be it'd be it, for one night, it would be like you just made the list, and it would be funny, it'd be hilarious, right? But then when you keep doing it weeks later, it's like. I mean, and then, and then you, and then immediately 
immediately, you would immediately think of Jericho in New Japan, and you'd be like, where the f- what happened? Why? Why go from that Jericho to this Jericho? You know what I'm saying? Like, why? Why waste your time with that? You know, so, I just, oh, so, all I can say is, dude, all the elite wrestling, I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm not like these fucking marks out here, fucking marking out hard. Oh my god, it's gonna be competition in WWE. It's gonna, it's gonna like fucking, it's gonna, it's gonna be better than WWE. It's gonna be like, it's gonna be better in ratings and all this other shit. You know, I, I'm not thinking like that. I'm thinking the only positive thing I'm thinking about AEW towards WWE is giving them a quick, uh, a swift kick in the ass to say, "Hey, do fucking better with your product, could you?" You know, that's how I look at it. Uh, Gold uh, Dustin Rhodes rather, Do Dustin Rhodes Gold Dust discusses walking away from WWE talent being scared of Vince McMahon. Uh, do I really have to read all this shit? That's a long shit to read. <laughs> no, you could. I'm not reading all of that. In the end, I'm not reading all of that. Fuck. Fuck that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not reading all of that shit. Um, but yeah. <sighs> all I can say is I can't wait for Double or Nothing. If I can get my hands on it, I'm going to watch it and get my thoughts on it and review it, maybe. Um... This week in WWE, SmackDown was just... SmackDown was okay, but it wasn't, like, good enough for me. I'm sorry. Like, it wasn't good enough for me to enjoy, is what I'm trying to say. Everything else this week was riding WWE, Money to Bank, you know, just... Ah, Brock Lesnar coming out. That was, like, the best part of the night for me. It was just funny. You know, Brock Lesnar being a prick. I, I love prick Brock Lesnar. And then coming out boom boxing to the fight and fight contract. <laughs> like there's some memes out there about it, but some weren't. Some were awful of the memes of Brock Lesnar boom boxing with the briefcase. So, so yeah. Uh, what do you guys think about all this stuff, man? What do you guys think? AEW. What do you guys think of WWE and 24/7 Championship? What are your thoughts? You like the title? Are you 50/50? You hate it? What? What are your thoughts about it? Leave your comments down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this. A lot of non-wrestling videos are coming out this week, by the way. I, I recorded some other gameplays. So stay tuned with Facecam, by the way. So stay tuned with that. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, at Boy13Jam. And I'll see you guys next time. And I'm out. Later.